Hey, John Cristani here, and today's video is going to be something a little bit different. I'm going to be talking about creator burnout and some one of the downsides of becoming a YouTuber. Now, I know a lot of you watching YouTube and watching my channel want to learn how to become a YouTuber and see the potential of how much money people who have YouTube channels make, but there are some serious downsides that you have to be prepared for if you actually want to really make this a uh, full-time living for yourself. And one of the big things that has been coming up a lot recently has been burnout, creator burnout. And my friend Roberto Blake recently did a video on this, or acquaintance. I mean, he's a great YouTuber. I suggest you follow his channel. He had a great video on creator burnout. And in this video, I'm gonna be going over some of the reasons why creator burnout happens and trying to become a YouTuber and also what you can do to prevent it. Now, everyone knows that most creators don't ever make it. And I'm going to be going over the reasons that prevent many people from becoming full-time YouTubers. So welcome and watch out. We're going to have a lot of interesting content. Let's get it. Hey, John Cristani here, and I've been doing YouTube for about, th about, about three years. I've been doing daily uploads to YouTube. Every single day, Monday through Friday, for almost three years. And I've been able to grow my channel to the point where it's making me anywhere from about fourteen dollars to $20,000 per month with an audience of over 350,000 people. But it hasn't been easy, and many people don't make it even past 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. And I'm going to be going over some of the reasons why this happens. It's a phenomenon of mental health called creator burnout. And some of the major reasons why this happens is because of, an, really, it's the YouTube algorithm and how to play with the YouTube algorithm. Now, for me, there have been times in being a YouTuber where it's just been anxiety provoking to create another upload or you know during three years to not miss an upload date has just been really difficult so i've experienced a lot of these things but i've barreled through so why does this happen first off youtube has a big preference for regular content and i'm talking in order to get boosted by the algorithm you really need to be uploading at least three bit new videos every single week consistently for many months on end and to be able to do that and not miss an upload date is really difficult for most people from who I've talked to. And it's also difficult for myself because to not, you know, life situations happen, things come up, but the YouTube algorithm doesn't care. The YouTube algorithm doesn't care if your family member's sick or if your dog has to go to the hospital or if, you know, your computer's broken or if your video camera has a bug in it or your software's whatever you know your work your job your work schedule gave you extra hours youtube algorithm doesn't care all it wants is regular content and unfortunately if you miss an upload date it's going to from from the best i know severely hinder your progress in becoming a youtuber the other factor is the algorithm from what i see prefers a narrow focus of content now from what you've seen on my channel i talk about just affiliate marketing Really, I'm just talking about affiliate marketing and ways to get traffic for doing affiliate marketing and also how to do advertising, and, but everything's focused around affiliate marketing. Now, with such a narrow focus, you end up repeating yourself day after day or at least week after week or month after month, especially if you're doing YouTube for years on end. And to really box yourself into a narrow focus as you know we're all complex human beings here it can be a bit difficult mentally to just do the same thing day after day when you know for me and for instance there's a lot of subjects i want to talk about i want to talk about no, you know being a digital nomad i want to talk about taxes i want to talk about complex op you know optimization theory i want to talk about all of this stuff but the issue is I've released videos on all these topics, but again, YouTube won't show that content to many people, nor will it get boosted by the algorithm because it doesn't lie in that narrow focus 
that YouTube really prefers in order to keep the momentum of a channel going. It's kind of unfortunate. I do see people requesting many video topics, but I know that they won't cater to the YouTube algorithm. And this is something you have to keep in mind is that being a YouTuber can, you know, end up getting towards becoming a little bit of a job because you really have to stick within your narrow focus if you actually want to make an income off of YouTube or else your just videos aren't really going to get picked up and aren't going to be shown to anyone and then you're just kind of shooting blanks. The next reason why YouTube can be, you know, creator burnout happens is bullying. So, you know, cyberbullying is a real big problem online. If you're a creator, let me know if you've experienced this. But typically for men, you know, for instance, you know, running business channels, you get a lot of hate. You get a lot of people, you know, I've been called a Jew. I've been called a Nazi. Not that anything's bad with that, but I've been called a Nazi. I've been called a Jew Nazi. <laughs> you know, I've been called every single word in the dictionary. I have those comments automatically filtered out now. But still, to get thousands or hundreds of comments a day, you know, just kind of putting people down can be difficult. For women creators, I see just unbelievable things being said about, you know, they're too fat, too ugly, people making fun of acne or people making fun of skin conditions or pe people making fun of the way others talk or things people do or things in the background of, of their videos and people's lives. So, you know, on both sides of the spectrum, there's just a monster amount of bullying and to be able to put up with that as a creator, day after day, week after week, month after month for years, can be really wearing on folks because as humans, we're trained to look for, look at the negative and pay more attention to negative things rather than paying attention to positive things or appreciations, et cetera. So this can really get wearing on people. I know multiple YouTubers who have gotten out and stopped doing their channel completely or people who have just completely pivoted what they're talking about and basically letting their channels die because of cyberbullying. So it's a real thing. It affects a lot of creators and you know, a lot of people get out of the game because of this. So to be a YouTuber, well, we'll talk about how to prevent it in a second. Now, the fourth reason I see is competition. So the bar for how good content is, how well it has to be outlined, how well the editing is, just everything related to content, it, the competition is just rising. So everything has to get better. And that moving bar for what is acceptable and what will get views on YouTube is constantly just going up. And that, that you know, having a moving target can be very difficult and anxiety provoking for many people to continually get better. I know I went through this last year around August in 2019. You know, I was looking at the other channels in my niche, which is like Dan Locke, Kevin David, etc. And I saw those channels and I said, oh my gosh, the production quality required for me to get to a million subscribers, which had been my goal, I just realized I am going to have to increase my game a lot. Even looking at people like Big Mark, who uh, script out, who are, you know, who have either he does the copywriting or somebody else does, but basically every video is scripted out. Every single sentence, every single word has a script to it. And many other YouTubers do have intense competition and they have the, the bar is set very high, especially in competitive niches. Really all niches are competitive nowadays. I mean, there you, you can find small things here and there, but this is a big factor. And beyond this all is there's an uncertainty around what YouTube actually prefers you to do in regards to content. So not knowing what to do to increase your numbers, increase your views, increase your subscribers, is also very anxiety provoking and constantly working with a partner in a relationship where you never have any clue of what they want from you and what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing can be very difficult and anxiety provoking in trying to figure out what sort of new content to put out. And let me know if this all makes sense and if this is helpful and also let me know if you are a YouTuber if you've experienced any one of these issues, such as, you know, the anxiety around regular content, 
narrow focus, bullying, or competition. I'm going to go into some factors of how you can prevent all this stuff in just a second. But let me know what's been the biggest factor affecting you if you are a YouTuber. I'd be interested to hear. Now, what you can do to prevent some of this stuff is, you know, these are some methods I put into action to help tone this down. Now, unfortunately, with bullying, you're gonna have to develop thick skin if you wanna be on social media. The more successful you'll get, the more haters you will get, no matter what social media you are on, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, you know, you have a blog, you have a YouTube channel, whatever it is, you're going to get haters. So in order, to really make this a living, just develop super thick skin and understand that when people bully you or say things about your, you know, the way you look or say things about, you know, how you talk or what you do or the things you own, then just remember that they're not saying anything. It's not personal. It's a reflection of how they're feeling inside. Maybe that person is jealous. Maybe that person had a bad day. Maybe that person had something bad happen in their life and they are looking to expel that negative energy by putting it on somebody else. I mean, I, I'm, I'm hoping we all know that if you're having a bad day, yelling at somebody else is not going to make your day any better. It may make you feel a little bit better momentarily, but it's not going to change how you go about in life. And it's just not a good way of dealing with your own emotions. Now, the first thing I do to prevent creator burnout is I always have a backlog of content. Well, lately I haven't been, uh, but again, <laughs> you know, that's my fault. I usually have one to two months of content that is backlogged so that I never have to worry about missing an upload date or I never have to have anxiety about producing my next videos because I have such a backlog of content. That's really helpful. Okay. The second thing is that get assistance. Okay. I have a, I have a team of people in, well, I have a person in America who manages my channel and I have a team of people in the Philippines who do my editing. And if you're doing YouTube, you can get editors in the Philippines to edit your videos in anywhere from four to five hours at a couple dollars per hour. So you can have your entire channel managed for about $20, $25 a day if you create a clear process for how you want your videos edited and what you want, you know, the thumbnails or the titles or whatever that stuff to be. So getting assistance, once you start reaching that level where you can afford $20 to $25 per video can be very helpful in helping take a lot of the work off your hands so and make you more efficient in doing what you do best for YouTube, which is usually being on camera or shooting videos. And the third thing is having a clear process. Now for me, I know it takes me about two to two and a half hours per video in terms of outlining it, in terms of coming up with the idea, outlining my talking points, setting up the slides or setting up the websites that I'm going to be discussing and then actually performing the video, uploading the video, and sharing that with my editing team. So all of that is about two, two and a half hours for me. That's pretty good. For many creators, it takes a full day to do videos. So that's something to keep note of. And if you have an understanding of how long it takes you to do videos, then it makes everything just a lot easier because you have a consistent workflow and process. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if this was helpful in understanding the downsides of going into some of these business models that I talk about in the comments below. And let me know if you'd like me to talk more about the downsides of different business models, such as the downsides of e-commerce, the downsides of Amazon FBA, the downsides of affiliate marketing, or the downsides of other entrepreneurial type activities. Because all of these businesses, they come with their own issues. For instance, some people just don't have thick skin. Yet, I hear so many people want to be YouTubers. You're not going to work out if you don't have thick skin as a YouTuber because you're going to have to deal with hate and comments as you get into success. So every business model has its downsides. You need to be prepared for them. And let me know in the comments below if you'd like more description about those. Thank you for watching. Looking forward to seeing you in my future videos and make sure to hit the like button 
subscribe, and leave a comment. Have a good day.